again this morning in a comfortable seat with a relaxed position. We're going to do an alternate nostril breathing drill. I've been wanting to do this with you for quite some time. I've been reluctant to introduce it because, frankly, um, my uh, I've been so congested with allergies that I haven't wanted to try to breathe through an alternate nostril drill. Um, but I'm feeling pretty clear this morning, so I'm going to try to get you started. What you want to do is either, choice one would be to take your middle finger, you would rest it in the middle of the forehead between the eyebrows gently, and then you would place the thumb on one nostril and the pinky on the other nostril. Or, or you can simply use alternate index fingers. The purpose of alternate nostril breathing is lower stress and improve cardiovascular function, improve lung function and respiratory endurance, lowers heart rate, and promotes well-being. So the way it works is we close one nostril and we inhale through that nostril. Then we close and the other one opens for the exhale. Inhale through the same and then switch back. So we're going to give that a try for a few moments and see how that goes. So beginning with your hands ready to go, use one of your fingers to close your left nostril. Inhale through the right. Exhale through the left. Inhale again through the left. Close, open on the other side. Inhale, exhale. All right, so here we go. Right nostril, inhale. Switch, left nostril, exhale. Left nostril, inhale. Switch, right nostril, exhale. Inhale, right nostril, switch, left nostril, exhale. Inhale, left nostril, switch, exhale, right nostril. Right nostril, inhale, switch, left nostril, exhale, switch, left nostril, inhale, switch, right nostril, exhale, right nostril, inhale, switch, Left nostril, exhale. Left nostril, inhale. Switch. One more time. Right nostril, inhale. Switch. Left nostril, exhale. Left nostril, inhale. Release your hands and exhale. So that's called alternate nostril breathing, and you're welcome to do that at home. It is proven in a physiological man manner to lower stress, improve cardiovascular function, improve lung function and respiratory endurance, lower your heart rate, and promote well-being. It's called alternate nostril breathing. Let's inhale the arms overhead, bringing the palms together. Clasp the hands, release the index fingers. Set here, so set the shoulders onto the back. Inhale for the length. 
Exhale to tip over. We call this half moon. Inhale to lift. Exhale to set. Inhale to lift. Exhale to set. Inhale to lift. Exhale to roll over. Inhale. Exhale. Begin to feel the ribs peel away from the hips. Even though our arms are extended overhead, release the shoulders away from the ears. Actively pulling and stretching through the torso. And one more time through the heart center, we'll draw the hands to the heart center. Pause here, closing the eyes to set your intention for your practice this morning. If an intention does not come to mind, you are welcome to dedicate your practice to someone, to something. We know that when we set an intention or a goal, we get more out of our activities. And so the purpose of the intention is to enrich your practice, to give your practice a deep meaning. And we'll seal our intention this morning with actually the serenity prayer. God grant me the courage to change the things that I can, the serenity to accept the things that I cannot, and the wisdom to know the difference. Resting the hands to the legs, blinking the eyes open, Pause here for one deep collective breath. And exhale. Let's begin this morning by taking your right hand, placing that on the outside of the left knee. We'll take the left hand down by the chair, we'll inhale to lift, and we'll exhale to side bend, using the straight arm as a lever to find more reach, to find more bend, to find more C-shape. Pausing here to take some deep breaths. Remember to keep both hips anchored down. So two sit bones sealed to the chair, anchoring you with a strong foundation. Breathe in to extend, reach even further. Breathe out to find your edge. In breath lifts the arm overhead and out breath reaches to the back of the chair and we gently twist over the left shoulder. Completing your twist with your gaze. Again, anchoring down the sit bones. Acknowledge the length in the spine. Draw the tips of the shoulder blades around the spine. Loop the shoulders away from the ears. Peeking back over the right shoulder. And we'll release to the center. Pause here for a deep collective breath. The power of flooding our bodies with breath. Taking the left hand now, bring the back of the hand to the outside of the right knee. Anchoring down through the sit bones. Inhale to lift the arm overhead. 
and exhale to start your side bend. Pause to take an inventory. The soles of the feet are resting warmly against the floor. The knees are pointing straight forward. Hips are anchored down. Inhale to generate, to elicit more length. Exhale to tip more. You're cascading yourself over in a C-shaped bend. Send a wave of relax relaxation from the shoulder to the elbow to the fingertips. Take an inhale, and on the exhale, extend to your edge. In breath, lifts the arm overhead, and out breath reaches behind. You may be able to wrap the arm around the back of your chair or clasp into the corner of your chair. But whatever gives you some resistance to generate a deeper twist. Let's acknowledge the length of the spine from the tip of the tailbone through to the crown of the head. And kind of puff the chest. Take another breath in. And exhale, return to center. So at this point, we probably began to settle into a place of calm and peace. Take a moment and allow that sense of calm and peace and relaxation begin to wash over your entire body. It literally is like a feeling on the surface of your skin all the way to the deepest layer of your spirit. Let's move into our cat cow stretch. If you'd like to go to the floor, to your hands and your knees, I invite you to move to the floor. Otherwise, we'll take our flowing cat cow which brings mobility to the spine. I'm going to clasp onto my knees. <clears throat> Your in-breath will pull the spine high as in Halloween cat. And the out-breath will roll the shoulders back, tipping the tailbone and dipping the spine. And breath to pull the spine high, separating the vertebrae. Out breath to let the body be heavy. In breath, creating this length in the spine. Out breath to calf. The in-breath is what we call an extension. And the out-breath is a flexion. Now let's bring some mobility to the shoulders. Imagine rolling the shoulders around in the sockets as you move through your cat-cow stretch. We'll take one more cycle. And really, I think of our spine as our tuning cable to the universe. We want to take care of our spine in a loving, nurturing way. So that should have felt really nice on your back. Continuing with the idea of the spine, let's hit the top of the spine by beginning to draw our half circles. 
Allow each in-breath to lift the head to the side and each out-breath to bow the head down. Inhale to lift. Exhale to roll the head down. Taking on the analogy of maybe a kite blowing in the breeze. Create a sense of swaying action. I have lots of tension this morning. I can feel all the creaks and the bumps. I can feel the stretch beginning to happen. I literally just felt my shoulders soften down. Let's take one more pass through. in each direction. Coming to the center, we'll lift here and pause. Deep collective breath. Continue with the shoulders, begin your shoulder rolls. Free up the arms so that they're free to move. I have a couple messages popping through on my screen. I'm going to just pop up and check those. While I check those messages, please go ahead and just keep moving your arms as if in butterfly or in freestyle. After yesterday's experience, when I was trying to cover Mara's fitness yoga class, I'm a little reluctant when I see messages start popping up on my screen. Now actually bring the upper body, the torso, into the movement. So pretend you're in water. So reach and cup the water and push the water behind you. Reach and cup and push, actively push with the palms of the hand as if you were literally swimming in the pool and propelling yourself forward with your arms. And then bring the movement up into the shoulder blades. Maybe even start to let the hips creep a little bit. Oh, that feels good. Let's bring some deep breaths in. Slow breath out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Take a pause. That actually felt a little bit like a workout, didn't it? So same idea, but let's move in the back direction. I'm scooching myself a little bit forward in my chair so I have a little more room to move. And we'll start to draw the circles in the opposite direction. And just notice how the different pieces of the body respond as you bring the mo movement in the reverse direction. Opening. So I remember swimming backstroke in the pool and lifting and reaching back, lifting and reaching back. When we were kids, we were always looking for the flags that would be hung above the pool as our guidelines. Let's take a deep breath in, slow breath out, deep breath in, slow breath out, and release. Now we'll shift our attention from the upper part to the hips. So let's start by bringing the idea of the cat-cow into the rib circles. Um, so we'll hang on to the edge of the chair, pour the chest forward on a diagonal line, pass through the center, this is cow, to the other side, cat the back up towards the seat back. And we'll go the other way, so pour the ribs to the left, 
pass through the center as if cow pose, and to the right. Now cat pose, pull the spine back. I'd really like for you to feel the undulating and the waves in the spine and the hips. Making sure to go in both directions in the shape of a very wide half circle. So cat, cow pose moves forward, cat pose pulls back. You're actually also using your core muscles here. So this would be your out breath, in breath, out breath, in breath, out breath, in breath, out breath, in breath, and out breath to center. Pause here. So again, we're working on the hips, just waking up the um, hip joint. Take your right leg, place it over the left, flexing the foot, drawing the toes back towards the shin. Flexing the foot does help to stabilize the knee. Just notice where you are here. So a couple of almost like physical therapy moves. We'll clasp onto the leg and attempt to pull the leg up towards the chest. Now notice when you do this, if your body starts to collapse over, like to avoid that, I'd like you to keep the strength in the core as you pull up on the leg. And then move the leg around, up, down, side, side. You can draw some circles. If this is not an option to lift the leg, just keep the leg where it is and apply your pressure here. You can still, you can even almost like massage that area of the glute right into the chair. And that actually should feel really good on your bottom and your hip joint. We'll switch legs. Always pausing and taking our stretches with patience and progression. So setting first. Connecting with the breath. We have the power to ask our body to relax, and that's what you want to do right now is breathe and mindfully ask the muscles to soften, to release. And then you can grab onto the leg, you can give it some pulls, you can move around a little bit, draw some circles. You can shift around, massage into the corner of your hip. Taking the time to listen to your body and allow yourself to move creatively and organically. Make that feel good and releasing for you. It will place that foot down. Feet are about, I don't know, four or six inches apart, a natural hip distance. So if you think of where your sit bones are, your feet would align with the sit bones, which are into the buttocks and the back. So a very natural alignment of the legs, so hip, knee, ankle, toes. The heels would be are, are behind the second and third toe. Let's just move to the little digits. So the fingers and toes, 
curling, squeezing, extending, stretching. So anytime we do work that requires us to apply our mind, our mental energy to the movement of our body, we would call that a neuromuscular connection. And we really want to build that and foster that connection. So I'm going to ask you to remember the old adage, which I could never do, which was pat your head and rub your belly. It's the same idea. You're going to move one wrist and the opposite ankle at the same time and do all kinds of different movements there just to dig into that little joint of the wrist and the ankle. You can mimic, like I'm waving my hand and my foot. <laughs> you can draw circles. You can kind of extend the digits, squeeze, extend, squeeze. I always think of when, you know, when we, uh, maybe you get, you're at home and you're like, okay, switch to the other pair and you're at home and you're like, okay, I need to go to the store and you literally like know what you need to go get. You get in your car, you drive there, you park, you go in the store and you buy it and you're walking out from the store. You have no idea where your car is. You don't remember the drive at all. I call that autopilot. So we want to go off of autopilot and really like apply our mental power and energy to what our body is doing. It brings a real sense of meaning, peace, connection. All right, so we've hit all of the joints. I'd like to move into some strength work and then into some balance work. So first of all, with the strength, starting with the arms, we'll extend the arms out long with the palms up. So we're real open position. Think about broadening across the collarbones. When we take this position, sometimes we tense up, really loop the shoulders back into their sockets. Now, notice your spine. Make sure your spine is long, confident, and proud. We don't want to collapse. We don't want to rest back. We want to be strong and lifted, engaging our muscles. So now flip the palms towards me. Squeeze to the middle. Flip the palms away and push back. So squeeze forward and then push back. Imagining that you're moving through honey. I could say imagine that you're moving through mud. But honey is a much better analogy. It's sweeter. Now feel the action. So here's a squeeze, a contraction in the chest, and then open and squeeze the blades. So squeeze chest, shoulder blades, chest, shoulder blades open, and then reverse that open chest and squeeze blades. So in, 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 contract, out, 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 contract. In, flip and push, in, flip and push. One more time, in, flip and push. Hold the arms out there, hold, hold, hold. Stretch, 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 stretch. So think about slide and reach, slide and reach, slide and reach. Slide and reach. I know your arms are probably getting tired. Hang in there. Let's do about four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one, and release. That was very energizing, wasn't it? All right, so moving into the little muscles the biceps and the triceps. Let's move into a bicep curl. We'll just pull the wrist towards the shoulders and lengthen down without locking. So you up and down. Literally the only thing moving is the elbow joint and the forearm. 
The torso is so quiet and still. The legs are so quiet and still. Now draw your attention to creating your own um, resistance. So squeeze and resist. Squeeze and resist. Squeeze up, resist away. Inhale, exhale. We're going to take the same movement and we're going to shift planes of movement. So we'll squeeze in and extend out. In and out. In this position, you've now engaged your shoulders to hold the arms up in the air. So your shoulders become an assister. Squeeze and extend, but the biceps and triceps are still the primary movers. And then you can be superwoman and superman. Squeeze and extend. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, lift up through the core. Let's do two more. And out, hold, release. All right, so we'll move a little bit into some tricep movement. I'm going to give you some options. If you prefer, you can stand and do a tricep kickback. That's one choice. Another choice is you can be seated and do an overhead extension. And then a third choice, if you'd like more, is you can scoot your booty towards the end of your chair and you can do a dip. So you have lots of choices. You can stand and do a kickback, sit and do an extension, or a tricep dip. I'm looking for 16 reps. I'm going to do, um, I guess I'm going to do dips since I'm sitting here in the chair. Set yourself, take a breath in and out, and let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. We've got eight more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So uh, when it comes to any type of strength training, the flexion is the contraction of the muscle. And the extension is the lengthening of the muscle. So here, your bicep is your primary mover, pulling the wrist towards the shoulder. And then as you stretch out, the tricep becomes the uh, primary mover to pull the lever long. All right, so let's move into standing. We'll do some strength work for the legs. I'm going to turn side on so that you can see me. On a profile. The idea of what we're doing now is to feel the quadriceps, the calves, the hamstrings, and the glutes. That's where we're going to be now. So in standing, <clears throat> your feet are in what we would call not a narrow stance with the feet together and not a wide stance, just a regular mid stance. So somewhere with the feet directly below the hips, maybe just slightly wider. Toes are pointing straight forward, the heels are behind the second and third toe. Start to shift the booty back, bend the knees, set the weight into the heels, then press from the bottom up, so use the legs from the floor to rise. So we'll sit back and we'll rise up. Now your range is your range. We always move in a pain-free zone, so we move in a place where there is no pain, and we adjust our position to account for that. Begin to notice other muscles. We have lots of other muscles working right now, particularly the core, sitting and standing. 
as you track the hips back and the knees press forward, make sure that you're not shifting onto the toes. We don't want to do that. We want to sit back in the heels so you can actually wiggle your toes. So go ahead and do that. Wiggle your toes as we're moving through the squat. Now we'll drop down into the squat and hold. So when we take any type of strength work and we hold it without a range of motion, this is an isometric contraction. Your quads are holding your body in this position. The muscle is contracted. Now we're going to pump that muscle by 16 little pulses. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Maybe a little lower. You've got eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and hold. Sit lower. Use the body to lift to stand. Shake that out. Okay, so that was based mostly a quadricep movement. We want to feel our hamstrings and glutes. So you'll take one leg back. It doesn't matter where you start. You can hang on to the chair from either direction, and you'll bend both knees. Now, you are not on a tightrope. You're on railroad tracks. So there is still a hip distance between your thighs. We'll bend down, and we'll rise straight up. Now your range, it may be bigger, it may be smaller, but no matter what your range is, whatever leg is in front, push that heel down to rise up. So push and engage and lift up. And you'll notice when you move with intention, you're going to feel the back side of this leg. So down and up, moving within your range, whatever works for you. You may have a more narrow stance. You may simply, you can bring your feet really close together and sort of stagger your feet, but just work on that front leg. Whatever leg is in front, feel the back side of it. And then we'll hit the bottom and we'll stay. Whatever is the bottom for you, the contraction is into the glutes, into the hamstrings, 16 pulses to the floor. So a little push, 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 push. Five, six, seven, you've got eight. Maybe deeper, seven, six, five, four, three, two, hold. Sit a little deeper, and then rise out. Stay right here, whatever leg is in front. Lean over, put all of your body weight onto the front leg, and lift the other leg off. Now I encourage you to play around here, to practice letting go of the chair, to do whatever you like with your arms, but try to balance onto the one leg. Balance is actually deep strength work, deep muscular work holding the body into a certain position, and then it also requires a lot of focus on the mind. You have to stay tuned in, otherwise you fall out. Begin to stretch out your range. Take one more full breath and release. So we'll trade out the legs. We'll go to the other side. Bring the other leg in front. Setting yourself up first. Remember, we're not on a tightrope. Our legs are still hip distance apart. We bend into both knees and we find a range of motion where we are pain free. 
that may have it be a very great or a large range of motion. It might be a smaller range of motion. That's okay. But just begin to push into the heel of the foot that's in front and use that power to rise up. So start working your range in your, we would call this a static lunge because we're not stepping. We're moving with the feet in a static position. So it's called a static lunge. So I can already feel the back of this leg. As we move, we keep our shoulders stacked over our hips. We've got our muscles wrapped around our spine. Let's do four more. Maybe work your range a little bit, get a little bit uncomfortable. You have to be willing to get uncomfortable to keep eliciting change. Two more, we'll hit the bottom and stay. And we'll do 16 pulses in the contracted. So we've lowered down, the muscles are contracted, and then we pump the muscles. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, bottom and hold. Maybe a little lower, four, three, two, one. Press out, lean onto the leg in front, and begin to lift the leg off in the back. Get yourself stable. Look at one spot that's not moving. Something in front of you, something on the wall. Hold your gaze, and then practice letting go of the chair, it's really great to bring some arm movements to a balance. That adds a lot of challenge when you move your arms around. Play with your range, maybe lift the leg higher in the back. Get settled into your balance and then notice the muscles that are working. So the muscles on the support leg, holding you still, the muscles on the lifted leg, holding that leg elevated, the muscles in the core. Let's hold for four, three, two, and one. Release. So we have a lot of muscles and tendons and ligaments and even bones in our feet. Let's rock onto the balls of the feet, lifting the heels, and then rock back onto the balls of the heels and lift the balls of the feet. So really massaging into the bottom of your feet. Noticing here, if you've locked out your knees, do not lock out your knees. I have a micro bend in my knees. So I'm gonna rock forward and lift my heels high, calf muscles. Rock back, pull the toes towards the shins. Rock and lift, rock back and pull. Rock and lift up, rock back and pull. So for me, I feel like this is an inhale, this is an exhale. Inhale to lift, exhale to lower, Inhale to lift, exhale to lower. Let's do two more. And one more. And hold. So we're gonna move into down dog. You have two options. You can work from the high seat back. You'll place your hands onto the seat back. You'll bend at the waist and you'll walk your feet back to where you feel a long stretch through the back of the legs, along the back, to the shoulders, all the way to the fingertips. So this will be choice one. Choice two, if you'd like to grab the seat of the chair and work into your stretch, that's fine as well. This will get you a little bit more deep. It'll get you more, stretch you deeply or more deeply. So 
So beautiful back line opener. You've got your ears between your biceps, soft knees, soft elbows. Gaze is down, really settling in and let the stretch work its magic. We're going to inhale the body weight forward into a modified plank and exhale and press back. So inhale forward, body weight shifts into the palms, exhale back with soft knees. And exhale, so really synchronizing your movement here, breath in and out. In and out. This actually, I think, feels delicious. Okay, we'll do one more. We will hold, walk the feet back towards the chair. Use the strength of the legs to lift the body up. So from here, I do want to do one more thing. I'm going to ask you to put your foot onto the chair and switch. Now, if you're worried about your balance, turn side on, and you can hang onto the chair for your balance. But I do want you to alternate lifting the foot and placing it onto the seat of the chair, stepping down and stepping up. Down and up, down and up. Working on range of motion here, simulating the idea of walking. Now notice your core strength. Lift up from the pelvic floor. Where is your head? Where is your head gone? Pull your head up. Notice your shoulders. I like that little micro pause right there where you catch the core. The core catches you and stops you. The core catches you and stops you. Let's do four, three, two, and one. All right, we're going to move into some core strength work. So you can have a seat in your chair or you can work from standing. I'll get you started in the seat and then I'll move you over to standing. So we'll start with the right side of the body. You wanna think about the top rib crunching into your hip crest. So this movement here, it's a cinch into your right waistline. So you can take a surrender arm and you can tip like this and lift up. You can take two arms, tip and lift. If you want more range of motion, you can do the same thing in standing. All right, so I'm looking for 16 with intention, and I want you to feel the squeeze in the side body. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Be patient. Eight, <coughs> seven. Six, five, savor the work, four, three, two, and one. You can release. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got some pollen in my throat. Even though I'm indoors. <laughs> okay, other side, set your surrender or hands. You can rest your hands gently into your fingertip or both, either way is fine. 
If I began to move slowly and just kind of notice and squeeze, bring the intention into the muscle group. So mind on the muscle that you should feel working. Option to stand. Play around with that. You can reach and pull if you prefer. All right, so you've got 16. You're going to crunch on the contraction. Exhale and inhale to stretch. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Release, come to center. <clears throat> So core strength, <clears throat> center core, rectus abdominis. Take one leg, lift the thigh bone off the chair and extend the leg, and notice the core is holding you here. Feel the core. I know you feel your quadricep, but you should also feel your core. Release and try out the other leg. Extend the leg, lift the thigh away from the chair, extend the leg, lift up, 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 up and down. So now we'll switch. We'll go right, left. This is not a flick. It's not a flick. It's not a flick. It's a lift and a lower. Lift and lower. So moving up, lowering down. Moving up, lowering down. Up and down. Spine, shoulders, chest, heart, breath. Feel that core. It's assisting you as you lift the leg and down. Let's go four, three, two, and one. Release. <sighs> <clears throat> So I really like the idea of curling ourselves and crunching ourselves into a ball and then opening and lifting. We'll take eagle arms, you'll take the right arm under, bringing the backs of the hands together, or the palms, which is a deeper stretch. Now I'm scooching away from the back of the chair so I have a little bit more room to move. This will be your inhale as you bow, round the back, draw the elbows to the belly button, and then exhale to lift the arms, lift the fingertips. Inhale to pull in, round your spine. Exhale to lift, fingertips to the ceiling. Inhale to pull in, 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 in. Exhale to lift. All right, elbows to the belly button, round out the back, open the shoulder blades, and then reverse. Two more, and breath. Out breath. One more. Out breath and release, take a pause. So the problem with these black tops and the black chairs is you really can't see what my spine is doing, but I am actively really rounding and then lifting and lengthening. Let's go with the other side, left arm under, backs of the hands together or palms, anchor down in the sit bones, and breath to pull in. Out breath to open, lift the fingertips. And breath, elbows to belly button, round out the back. Open the shoulder blades. Out breath to lift, 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 lift. And breath, bow, curve. Out breath, lengthen, lift, 
up, out breath, excuse me, in breath, curve, out breath, up. Let's do two more, make them really deep. It is up to you. I can guide you, but you have to really ask and push in your physical body. Lift and release. Woo! So when we started this morning, I was freezing cold, and now I'm hot and sweaty. <laughs> oh, okay. Return to your seat, and we are going to come back to the idea of the nostril breathing. So I'd like to adopt the analogy of a baseball throw, or any type of a ball throw. So someone tosses you a baseball or a tennis ball. You haven't done it in a while. You catch the ball, and you start to throw it back to the person, and it goes off in some weird direction. And you laugh, and you're like, oh, <laughs> right, let's do that again. So you get the ball again, and you throw it a second time, and you're a little bit close, closer to your target. And by the third or the fourth time, you can toss it back and forth with your compatriot. So that's the same idea with the alternate nostril breathing. We did it at the beginning of class. We'll do it here at the end, and we should be able to execute the drill with a little more precision. So again, you can take your middle finger, just the pad of the middle finger, and rest it to the forehead. You can place the pinky and the thumb to alternate your nostrils. If this just feels super quirky, simply use your alternate index fingers. So we'll begin by closing the left nostril, opening the right. You breathe in. Switch, exhale. Breathe in, switch, exhale, breathe in, switch, exhale, breathe in, switch and exhale, breathe in, switch, exhale, breathe in. Switch, exhale, breathe in, switch, breathe in, switch, breathe in, switch, breathe in. and let it go. It makes me very happy when I look at my screen and I can see your frames and you're all playing along with me. I love the idea of being open and willing to try anything really um, and risk the idea of failure, but that real sense of willingness to uh, embrace vulnerability, it's a real power, it's a real strength. Let's inhale the arms high overhead. Exhale, bring the hands to the heart center. Pause. Release the arms by the side. Inhale. Through the midline. Exhale. One more time. We'll hold here at the heart center, closing the eyes. Rubbing the palms together, creating some warmth there. And then holding the warmth to the heart center. That is a symbol of me sending you my love and a big virtual hug. God grant me the courage to change the things that I can. The serenity to accept the things that I cannot and the wisdom to know the difference. Namaste.